Hello, B Nation. Dr. Francis Richards here, and we have an exciting opportunity for you to make your voices heard and win big at Black Entrepreneur Experience Podcast, aka B Podcast. We're constantly striving to bring you the most engaging and insightful content, but we need your help to make it even better. We want to get to know you, our incredible listeners, on a deeper level. That's why we've launched a short survey to gather your valuable feedback by taking just a few moments to complete our survey. You'll have the chance to win an Amazon gift card. To view the contest rules and complete the survey, please visit our official website at drfrancisrichards.com slash survey. The survey is also in our show notes. Hurry though, the contest deadline is approaching fast. Don't miss out on this exciting opportunity to give us your feedback and win fantastic prizes. Head over to drfrancisrichards.com, survey now, and thank you for your valuable input. The survey is also in the show notes. Thank you. Welcome to the Black Entrepreneur Experience Podcast. Inside the business, buzz, and brilliance of Black entrepreneurs, here is your host, Dr. Francis Richards. What happens in Vegas goes all over the world on Black Entrepreneur Experience, episode number 394. Thank you for joining us as we elevate the Black Entrepreneur Experience by interviewing CEOs, thought leaders, innovative thinkers, and Black entrepreneurs across the globe. I'm your host, Dr. Francis Richards. Our next guest is on a mission to bring plant-forward eating to underserved communities and populations and has a blueprint for taking your health and wellness into your own hands. Welcome, author John Lewis. Thank you for the invite. You're welcome. I've given our audience such a brief bio. Why don't you fill in the gaps and share with our audience what you want them to know about you and your business? It's interesting. Uh, My name is John Lewis, of course. Well, born in Little Rock, Arkansas, raised in St. Louis, Missouri. We moved there when I was like two years old. So I still have a deep connection with Little Rock because of my family that's there. Went to, uh, lived in Ferguson, Missouri. Went to undergrad at HBCU by the name of Harristow State College, which now is grown so much. It's actually Harristow State University now. So congrats to them for that. They get to live the amenities that we didn't have when I was there. (laughs) Now, then I went to graduate school at Nova Southeastern University in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, graduated from there, worked in education for some time, and got really into the health and fitness industry. And uh, as of 2012, I've been full-time with my venture, Badass Vegan. And at this moment, I also am a managing partner of a protein shake. We're the largest Black-owned protein shake company. We're in Costco, Target. Publix, I believe Ralph's as well. And then I also direct films as well. So I do a, do a lot of, uh, and produce films as well. Helping producing a film called by the name of What the Health that is on Netflix now. Just finished up the follow up film to that. Well, I won't say finished up, but finished up the majority of the film, which is the follow up film, which I've been fortunate to have uh, Chris Paul and Billie Eilish executive produce. And we're working on distribution for that right now and uh just finished my first book which hit the shelves march 14th so uh doing a lot (laughs) wow let's unpack that so talk about your book and the naming of your book (laughs) so the name of the book is badass vegan rightfully so with that being the name of my company and i guess that's pretty much been my moniker uh for quite some time now badass vegan didn't didn't start off as me it started off as more of a movement. I remember when I actually bought the website, the whole, the plan was to start like a vegan Facebook to have like, you know, people can have their own pages and have their pictures and all this stuff. And then I realized how much that would cost. And so it ended up being more about me after that. But the book itself is about a how-to guide of how to transition into a vegan lifestyle And even if you are vegan already, just kind of giving some pointers and tips on a healthier lifestyle goes from my history. Like I said, growing up in Ferguson, Missouri, dealing with everything I've dealt with and uh, also just makes it a little easier and not so 
scary to go vegan. I think a lot of people, they have a fear uh, when they think about veganism or plant-based living. And it's just kind of the show, you know, the difference that happen when you do it. So talk about being vegan versus being plant-based. Yeah, there's been some blurred lines over the past. For the most part, veganism is you don't eat or drink or wear anything that is a product or byproduct of another animal. Plant-based, on the other hand, may eat primarily plants. There are some people that that claim to be plant-based, but just to have a steak every now and then. Or there are some people that may be plant-based, but they still might wear leather or fur. So there's a little distinction between that. And uh, sometimes plant-based, they still might eat or drink dairy or butter or things like that. So when you, when it comes to veganism, it's a more regulated, I guess you could say. I don't like the word strict. It's just more regulated as far as like you don't involve in any animal products or byproducts of the animals at all. So are you full-blown vegan or plant-based? Yes, yes, full-blown vegan. I, I don't wear leather. I don't wear fur. I don't drink milk, don't drink dairy, don't eat fish, don't eat chicken. Anything that comes from an animal or the byproduct of an animal, I don't consume or wear. And talk about your protein shake. And I want you to talk about it from what is the name of it, but also it's completely vegan and the taste. Yes. So taste is important. I'm glad you said that, actually, (laughs) because... I think a lot of people think veganism and they're like, ah, oh, that's going to taste bad. It's like, no, I, I was not vegan my whole life. So I've been vegan 16 years now. And I can tell you, if it doesn't taste good, I'm not eating it myself. So the name of it is Nature Aid. That's our parent company. And then we have a, a sub brand by the name of Vegan Smart, which is that's the brand that's in uh, Target and Publix and a lot of grocery store chains. Our Nature Aid weight loss shake is actually in costco that's the one that's solely in costco you won't find it anywhere but costco but you can also order it on costco.com i learned something new once we got in there that you don't even have to have a membership to order from costco.com a lot of people don't know that so if you see something at costco you don't have a membership you don't pay for it just go on the website and order it and you can get it including uh, the shake itself but i will say it's uh 24 Five grams of protein, no soy, no dairy, no gluten, no GMO, no artificial flavors or coloring. It tastes very, very good. Right now, we just have the vanilla flavor and the one that's in um, Costco, and that's the Nature Aid. But if you're talking about the Vegan Smart, then we do have uh, chocolate, wild berry, and vanilla for that one. And what's the difference between the two? The difference between the two mainly is that Costco likes to have like an exclusive brand per se. And so we actually formulated this one just to go into Costco. So that's what been the biggest difference in that. So like I said, this one is 25 grams of protein. The Vegan Smart is 20. I would say that the Nature Aid is a little thicker and creamier. Even though the Vegan Smart tastes great, the Nature Aid is a little notch above it. And someone that is interested in weight management. Are you using the protein shake as a supplement, as a meal supplement, or are you using it to enhance new nutrition? I always say it depends on the goal of the person. You know, you can use it whether you're trying to lose, gain, or maintain. Um, I always say if you're trying to lose weight, then you could use it as a meal replacement and replace one or two meals when you're doing that. I'm out never, ever recommend that you just drink protein shakes the whole day. I see people do that, and I'm like, no, you still need food. Now, it's good for, like I said, transitioning. If you're just going vegan, it's good for if you're time management, you don't have time to prepare a meal. It's good for assisting you in your journey, but I don't believe that it should replace all your meals. I still think we need food regardless. So if you're losing, you replace one or two meals with it. If you're maintaining you can just kind of add it on throughout the day. And if you're actually uh, trying to gain weight, then you definitely like, say you have your meal and that would be like your dessert after the meal to add to whatever you're doing. So that's the way I, I, it depends on the goal of the actual individual and it can apply to whichever spectrum that it goes with. So talk about 
John, why did you become a vegan? For me, it started with my mom was diagnosed with colon cancer. And uh, I remember talking to the doctors, asking, you know, how did this happen? What's going on? And uh, that's when the doctor informed me that, you know, this was uh, too much animal protein, fried fatty foods. And, uh, you know, at first I was like, wait a minute, this isn't hereditary. And he was like, no, this is a lifestyle choice. So I didn't go vegan immediately. And I don't even think he was suggesting I go vegan, to be honest. I think he was just telling me the facts. You know, you can go to CDC, World Health Organization, you can see it's there. So I started doing more research. And the more research I found, I just saw that it wasn't just the cancers. It was also like the hypertension, the heart disease. You know, it was so many things linked to this animal protein in our body that I was like, well, let me just eliminate this. I always say I'm a big believer in learning from my mistakes, but I'm a bigger believer in learning from other people's mistakes as well. So, you know, unfortunately, it was my mom that went through that. But when that happened, I transitioned out of it. And how's your mom doing? She actually passed away in July, but she, when she was diagnosed with the colon cancer, we, she did live another 13 years after that. So that was amazing. Yeah. And so sorry for your the loss of your mom. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Talk about going vegan, plant-based, however, and the dirty side of it. And when I say the dirty side, there are people who are going plant-based, but they are still, or they're giving up meat, but they're still holding a lot of mask in terms mm-hmm. of a lot of weight. And some are even gaining weight because of the choices that they're making. Talk about that. Right. Well, that's the thing. When you're holding on to weight and you're trying to lose weight, you got to remember that just because you went vegan doesn't mean you're going to be healthier. There's vegan cakes, cookies, pastelitos, whatever you want to go with. It's vegan everything. It's vegan fried food. It's vegan. That's the the gift and the curse of living in the age that we're in. You know, if you... You want a burger, you can go get a vegan burger. You want vegan lasagna, you can go vegan lasagna. You can get whatever you want. So I always say, you know, your transition, depending on what you want to do, you still have to have some self-control with it. I think a lot of people think, oh, I went vegan to get healthier, but they're still eating French fries and, and, and not saying that these things are evil, but you also have to eat in your goal. Like if your goal is to lose weight, you can, in all honesty, you can eat the vegan burger, the vegan fries, the vegan cakes and cookies, but those calories and those macros have to fit in your goal as well too. So you can't eat until you're like just ready to go to sleep every time, you know, you got to actually like monitor that. Like, okay, this cheeseburger that I'm going to have, this vegan cheeseburger, how does it fit into my proteins, my fats and my carbs? I maybe only half the burger today and just to feel that taste and move on. A lot of times people just think, you know, the ego takes a a big role in our lives and it'll tell us we can do so many things that we know we shouldn't be doing, but we'll just keep doing it. And uh, I think that's where you feel you find a lot of people that fall short of the goal because they go in kind of blindly and just want to do whatever they want. But they have a goal as well. So you have to pick one, either the goal or the ego. John, what advice would you give someone who's wanting to transition? How do you recommend they transition into more of a a plant-forward, plant-friendly lifestyle? The biggest thing I always say is that, number one, you got to have fun. I believe the problem is a lot of people, and this goes for a lot of changes in people's lives, when they go for these changes, they put so much stress on themselves that they don't enjoy the journey. And then they're stressed out within the first three days. And they're like, you know what? This wasn't for me. It's like, wait, you only been doing it for three days. Like, what do you think? It was just going to be automatically easy. So I always say this. I And I talk about this in the book. And I say, you got to treat this journey like a new relationship. The first 30 days of a new relationship, y'all getting to know each other. Y'all having fun. Y'all going on dates. Y'all seeing what the likes and dislikes are. You know, you romance and everywhere, whether it's the plane, the library, the dressing rooms, y'all just all over each other. And do the same with this food. Like, find out what you like and you don't like. If you really think about it as a carnivore meat eater, we only consume four to five 
animals. There's the cow, the chicken, you know, the lamb, the pig. And so when it comes to fruits and vegetables, though, there are over 70,000 edible plants on this earth. With that being said, have fun. Go see what you like. Go see what you don't like. You'll be amazed at the things that you probably thought were nasty that were amazing. And then you're probably going to find some things that just don't taste good to you either. There's a, there's a fruit by the name of durian that I can't stand. I'm sorry. I, I'm vegan, but I can't. I don't care what anybody does to it, how they cook it, how they prepare it. I can't do it. But I will say, once I start exploring, until I moved to Miami, I had never had a plantain, an avocado. I never had a real mango before. So there's so many artificial things that we always have that we don't even think about it. But to eat those natural things, I didn't even realize I never had a I had pineapple until I moved to Florida. I would always have like pineapple soda, pineapple candy, things like that. But if you explore and have fun, the journey is going to be so much easier. And then you do that for 30 days. I always say do that for 30 days. And after that 30 days, now you know what you like, what you don't like. And now this is where the goals come in, where we talk about lose, maintain, or gain. If you want to lose weight, you can eat the stuff you like, but eat less of it. And if you want to gain weight, you eat the stuff you like, but eat more of it. And if you want to maintain, you just continue doing what you've been doing for the last 30 days. And so that takes a lot of stress off of people. It takes a lot of that you know, mind-bending activity that people have to go through. Because a lot of times when people want to go vegan, they always ask me, like, I want to go vegan. I need a meal plan. I'm like, well, do you have a meal plan now? And they're like, no. I'm like, well, do you think all vegans walk around with a meal plan? Like, no, like, that's not the case. Now, if you have a body goal, like, literally in mind, like, you want to be a bodybuilder, you want to get on stage, you want to have a certain look, then yes, then you might have to have a plan. But if you're not, if you're just looking to get healthier, that's not the case. John, show us the book. It's an absolutely fabulous book. Great yeah. read. Thank you for Thank my you. copy. Definitely. And let people know how they can get the book. And I want you to share, and you have many, your amazing recipes. Oh, I cannot wait. <laughs> and I don't even want to talk about me. And I'm 90% plant-based, not vegan, and I don't want Peter coming after me. Still wear my furs <laughs> and leathers. So, and you know that you know I say when I first went vegan, I didn't get rid of everything right off the bat. I'm like, hey, I'm not rich. I can't like just transition completely out. So what I would do is I would I needed a belt. Once I found a vegan belt, then I would transition and donate that one to somebody, or donate it to Goodwill or wherever. Shoes. I still had my shoes and then I would replace them one by one, my dress shoes, my tennis shoes, my basketball shoes, my running shoes. But it took time. It was like when I found something that fit into my lifestyle, then I did it. A lot of times people think, oh, I got to get rid of all this now. It's like you can do that, but you might not find the one you want, the style you want immediately after you just donated all the ones you did love. So that's something to, to keep in mind. But, yeah, take your time, find the stuff you like and then. Once you find it, then you replace it. You donate the leather option or the suede or whatever the case is. Where can they get the book? Sorry about that. You can find the book at Barnes & Noble, Target.com, Amazon.com. A lot of local bookstores have it as well. If you go to my website on my book tab, you can find all the different locations that you can find it at. But it's pretty much everywhere. I've been very fortunate to where my publisher put it in as many locations as possible. I'm also hosting about 13 to 14 events this year, and I have the book at all the events as well. And I'm signing and autographing copies there. Tell us the website where they can find out the events. Badassvegan.com is uh, the website. One event that I'm hosting is called the Vegan Street Fair. We just had one Sunday. It had 40,000 people there, which was amazing. It basically takes up about six to seven blocks. And then it's just food vendors, clothing vendors. We had 95 vegan food vendors there. It was amazing. And basically, we're doing nine cities with that one. And that one is, uh, we did LA to kick it off. We got Miami, April 22nd. Then we got New York, Austin, Texas, Vegas, Seattle, Oakland, Atlanta. I believe that's all eight, I believe, the next eight cities. And I'm also hosting a, an event called the Vegan Block Party, 
which is in Fort Lauderdale. I host that four times a year. That's in one location. And I'm hosting the Vegan Soul Fest, which is in Baltimore, Maryland. And then I'll, I'll speak at a lot of different engagements, too, in which I'll be at. And uh, I'll have the book there as well. It's a beautiful book. Great read. Tell us, I know you have many. Share your favorite recipe and a story behind it. I got to go with, and I'm sorry, I, I don't have the page right off of the bat, but I can tell you my favorite recipe and the reason for it being my favorite recipe is the um, badass, beautiful mess. And the reason why it's my favorite recipe, there are some in there that, that may taste better. That's true. But this one just brings back memories because it was when I was like dead broke. I had like $8 in my account and I was like, what am I going to eat today? And I looked in the cupboard and I had sweet plantains, I had quinoa, I had some onions, I had some avocados. And I was like, you know what? We're going to put this together and it's going to be a beautiful mess. And I literally said it to myself, not thinking of like making a recipe out of it. It was just something that I needed. And when I tell you it was just perfect. So you take a bed of quinoa, put it in a bowl. I like to bake the sweet plantains, you know, keep from frying it. Not that I don't eat fried food, but I try to limit it as much as possible. So once I got, you put that in there, you put the sweet plantains, you put, I make it into guacamole. I'm not a big fan of just avocado by itself. I like to season the avocado. So I did that, put the guacamole on top, and then I grilled the onions. And I put the grilled onions on top of that. And it's just, it's just perfect. It's got like the sweet, the savory, the healthy fats. It's just, everything's in there. And then, a lot of people don't know that quinoa actually has um, all the amino acids that you need. So it's a complete protein as well. It just feels the need and it tastes real good. And I'm going to step back and then step forward in the same conversation. So excited that you are coming to my great city, Las Vegas. So we will catch it. We will definitely ah, hook up. And when yes. you talked about the quinoa, I'm interested in and I'll explore in the book more so I haven't been a big fan of that. And I don't know. And and I've had it out at a recipe. I mean, at a restaurant, not specifically making it myself. So I hadn't purchased it because I didn't like the taste of it. Yeah. So I'm going to have to revisit that. And I believe too. Um, and so this is the picture of the badass, beautiful mess. Nice. Um, yes. Yeah, very, very tasty. But one thing I'll say is that uh, I don't think, I think I was in the same boat. When that happened, when I transitioned over and I started eating the quinoa and uh, Amrath and checking out all these things. But one thing that we forget is that you could season all these things. Like I had to deal with, you know, once I started working with like the seasoning, put a little oregano in there, put a little uh, salt in there, Himalayan sea salt, things like that. Then it started to like pick up. One, there's a good friend of mine by the name, her name is Chef Charity Morgan. And she gave me this amazing tip. I think I mentioned it in the book and I, I gave a shout out to her for it. But she always talks about a lot of times you can make, especially when you got a big family, you don't have time to cook 18 different meals every day. So she'll make the basics it's like, okay, we're going to make rice. We're going to make beans. We're going to make these plantains. But what she'll do is she'll make a batch of four different sauces for the week. So that sauce changes the whole complex of the meal. And you're not spending a lot of money. You're not going crazy. And she said her kids love it. They're like, hey, we having the red sauce today? We having the green sauce today? Like, it changes the whole taste and texture of that meal. It could be the same core, but once you change that sauce, and everybody, I'm, I'm sure anybody that's watching this right now, they can think, when you change that sauce, it changes the whole complex of a, of a meal. That's awesome. I want you to have a monologue. I want you to name this person, living or not. And they've inspired you so much. Who is that person? And what are you saying to that person, John? Thank you, mom, for everything that you've done for instilling in me that it's okay to be confident and always look out for others. Just an amazing person, selfless, gave up everything. A lot of people don't know. I talk about it in the story in my documentary as well as the book. You were really my grandmother. You adopted me at birth. My mother was addicted to crack cocaine and I was actually born addicted to crack cocaine myself. And she still took me in and loved me like I was her own. 
And I love you and I appreciate that. That's a beautiful story. Thanks for sharing. Talk about becoming an author and writing the book. It's definitely a process. <laughs> like, you know, a lot of times you think, oh, I got all these thoughts in my mind. I'm going to put them on paper, going to sell this book. And it's like, no, it's not like that. It's the format you got to do. It's it's so many things that go into it. You know, even the recipes, like narrowing those down and the photographers that I worked with. Like, I, everybody was an integral part. I had an assistant writer that helped me out as well to, like, have that, that correct format. So it probably took about a year and nine months to finish the whole book. I and mean, that's because because there was so much detail in it. If it would have just been a recipe book, then it would have been fine. But me telling my story, talking about the transition to veganism, how to help people, helping people how to figure out their macros for their life, talking about health implications that come with this lifestyle change. There was a lot. Like There's 80 recipes in the book. But that's not the main focus of the book. The book is the how-to guide. And then the recipes just happen to be a bonus. But I still wanted to be appealing to the eye and make sure that like people saw that and, and they wanted to engage in this book and read it, not just for the recipes, but for everything that was in there. Talk about bringing your product to market, the protein shake. Mm -hmm. How did you get involved in that industry? And what advice would you give? I will say this, and I think any entrepreneur, any successful entrepreneur understands this. Whatever you do, do not do it because you think your family and friends are going to buy your product because they just want it for free. <laughs> That's, that is a hundred percent facts. Like I never forget before the protein shake, I had a, a protein bar out. Uh, it was called Badass Power Cookie. We did, we're doing pretty good. We did okay with it. I never forget one of my brothers one time. He was like, you know, it would be so much more successful if you change this and change that. And I told him, I said, you know, you know what would make it more successful? And he said, what? I said, if you actually bought it and then wait for me to send you free boxes all the time, like that would make it more successful. Like you're always going to have those family and friends that just want the free stuff. So that is the <laughs> first lesson in business. <laughs> it never fails. And I, I'm telling you, now you will get your friends and family that will support. Don't get me wrong. But they're still waiting on that free stuff at the same time. But, you know, I got involved into it because, you know, being vegan, my two business partners are my frat brothers as well. I'm a member of Kappa Alpha Psi, and my two business partners are in the same fraternity. So we've known each other for a while, and they had uh, bought out the company Nature Aid previously, but they didn't have any vegan items. And that's when uh, Kareem Cook, which is like my brother at the same time and business partner, he approached me and asked me, you know, would you help us formulate this? And I was like, of course. And I was just doing it off of the strength that we were frat brothers, brothers, whatever you want to call it. And then that's when he came around. And he was like, hey, man, we this is like your baby, too. We'd love to have you a part of this. And, I, and the funny part was, I was like, ah, the way my finances are set up, I was basically broke. So I was like, the way my finances are set up, I don't know if I can invest in that. He's like, no, no, no. Like, we'd bring you in as a partner, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, if that's the case. Let's go. So over time, you know, we started developing, we got very fortunate that the company that we bought was already in some stores. So that way, transitioning and adding these products to the matrix, the stores are already buying from the company. So it was easier to be like, hey, we got these new products, here you go. And uh, we have Magic Johnson as a partner. We have Grant Hill as a partner. So that really helped out a lot too. <laughs> you throw that name Magic Johnson on something, it's kind of like, oh, okay. Maybe we need to listen to what they're saying. But at the end of the day, no matter what, no matter who you know, what you know, if the product is not good, because there were some models before this that didn't taste as good. And believe me, we knew. And once we changed those tastes and those uh, the contents to be better on the stomach and, you know, now we got prebiotics in it as well as the prior. Uh, probiotics to, you know, ease the gut health. And once you started really diving into that, that's when it really took off. It's because we put more energy into the actual product instead of just trying to hype the product up. Talk about raising capital. And you alluded to it when you got into business, but talk about raising capital for your business. That's another thing that I think a lot of people don't realize 
can be difficult, but it also has to be, you have to be patient. That was another thing. I think a lot of times we have these goals and dreams. We're like, I got a goal and dream now. I need the money now. And people are like, all right, you got the dream and goal, but let's evaluate this. Let's look at this. Let's make sure, you know, whether it's, you know, the protein shake, the book, the films, it takes time. You have to get somebody to see your goal and understand what the goal is. And the timing has to be right. There might be somebody that has the money, but they don't have the money to allocate to you at the time. And I think a lot of people get that confused, too, where they're like, oh, this person's rich. So if they don't give me the money. That means they're being selfish. And they're like, no, no, no. It just the timing's not right. And I believe you, the most important thing and out just not with capital, but business in general, is that you have to be OK with this working out tomorrow or 20 years from now. That's what people don't realize, like. Your time schedule doesn't mean that's the universe's time schedule, the whole business time schedule, the bank's time schedule, whoever's going to give you the capital. Everybody has a different schedule. And you have to understand that if you really want to be successful in this, being patient, but still pushing forward is very important. I always tell everybody, I'm the friendliest pit bull you're ever going to meet. Like, I'm always nice. But I'm still going to make sure that we get this done. Like, I'm not going to push it. I'm not going to bother. I'm not going to harass anybody. But I'm going to make sure that, we, you know, hey, this is over here. We're working on this, this and that. So as far as capital, you really just got to make sure that the product is superior and that you have to remember, too, as an entrepreneur, you are the brand. I think a lot of times people forget that. Like, their social media page is all over the place. They're, they got a lot of negativity. Like, these people are going to check you out. You know what I'm saying? They're going to look and see what you're doing. If you, you, you know, you're using the B word, the all the things like I crack a lot of jokes on my page, but I never degrade anybody. I never talk bad about anybody. If you want these people to invest in you, they're going to do that background check. They're going to see what you're talking about. They're going to see if you're spewing hate. They're going to see if you're spewing love. They're going to see it all. So be weary of not just your product, but remember you are your product as well. There are so many brands and businesses that are dominating. Talk about a brand or a business that's dominating that you admire and why. I would have to go with, I would go with Beyond Meat, Ethan Brown, good friend of mine. I know people sometimes are like, oh, the mock meat, that's bad. But as far as how he's changed the game and taken his company to a multi-million dollar company from his garage, pretty much is amazing and you know his ethics are still there he won't deal with anything that you know doesn't promote the whole community as a whole and he's just being innovative too he's always developing new some kind of vegan chicken some kind of vegan beef some kind of vegan I, they'll probably have cheese next day because they do everything and I, I love how he's basically penetrated the market and almost created a new market because of it. John, what is your zone of genius? Zone of genius? I don't think I've ever been asked that one. That's a, can you help define that? I, yeah, I don't know. Another way would be, what is your superpower? Oh, man. My superpower is love. It really is. Like, I, you know, it's so funny. I just believe if everything's done with love, everything's going to work out. And it starts with self-love. I think people fail to realize that, like, the more you love yourself, the less this world can bother you. And people don't realize that. Like, I was talking to a good friend of mine, and we were talking about stress. And I was like, well, every situation happens to everybody almost. But the stress that comes with it is us. We put the stress on what needs, and this needs to be done today. This needs to be done tomorrow. So, oh, God, what am I going to do? Somebody else is like, oh, this has to be done tomorrow. Okay, well, let me get to work. So I believe that self-love and having the confidence in, in yourself to understand that you can get this done, understand that I can live my healthiest life and live my most fruitful life. I think a lot of times that self-love, people think it they turn it into monetary. You know, as long as I got this money, I love myself. I can go do these things like, yeah, but when it's all said and done, that health is the most important thing you're ever going to have. It's the, the biggest wealth you'll ever have. Because there's a lot of rich people sitting on a deathbed because they didn't take care of themselves. I'm not talking about 90, 100 years old. I'm talking about like 40s and 50s that didn't live that healthy lifestyle and it came back to haunt them. 
And so I would say my superpower definitely is love and, and self-love is the, the number one thing. And then once I love myself, now I can love the rest of the world. But a lot of times we have this fake love in, inside and we deal with a lot of hate. And when you're full of hate already, anything can trigger you to be more hateful. But when the love is inside, it doesn't matter what, what's thrown your way. You won't display that hate. You won't even embrace that hate. You'll push that hate away and just keep on loving. The best advice you were ever given. The best advice I was ever given. Wow. It's a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to say the best advice I was ever given is do you. And I know it sounds basic, but I, and it was uh, from my mentor, Jim Morris. And he just basically was like, do you like at the end of the day, you can't be anybody else. You can only be yourself. A lot of times people spend so much time trying to impersonate somebody else's goals, uh, somebody else's dreams, but they're not pursuing their own dreams. You can, there's only, you're one of one. We're all one of one. And I can give somebody my exact formula on business and they still won't get the same results as me. But if I pursue what I am here to do, what I'm put on this earth to do, I can't be stopped. And I think if everybody finds that and, and, and understanding that everybody doesn't have to be an entrepreneur to be successful. I think sometimes as entrepreneurs, I see that so much. I dislike when I see that when entrepreneurs are like, oh, you got a nine to five, then, you know, you ain't living the dream and this and that. It's like, no, well, some people enjoy their nine to five. Everybody's not meant to be an entrepreneur. I think when you find what is for you, then everything works out. How do you find that? The way I say it, and this is something I came up with a while ago. I made a post about it. I said, you take 10 things that you love to do and write those 10 things down. Out of those 10 things that you love to do, what helps the world, the community, but what helps something else besides yourself? Out of those 10 things. And out of those whatever's dwindled down to those, you know, three, four, five, then you go, the last step is out of those three, four, five, whatever's left over, what would you do no matter what, if you never got paid for it? And that's when you find that's your why. That's the one that you need to pursue. Of course, you can get paid off doing it, but what's that one that you would do if you found out tomorrow, hey man, I'm not getting a dime for this, but you would still keep going. That's when you found your passion per se. John, if you conducted this interview, what is the one question you would have asked yourself? I want you to ask the question and answer it. That's a good one. Man, you got some good ones here. <laughs> I would say, what's next for you, John? And uh, as far as that, I am um, working on a, my co-director, Keegan, uh, and myself, we're working on a series for Nat Geo. It's not official yet, but we are in talks with them about a show about basically decolonization of the world, showing the last 2,000 years of how colonization has shaped the way we live today. And from everything from our hairstyles to tattoos to earrings, the way we eat, our religion, our education, even the way we name our children. You know, like, remember, you know, we always sometimes we're like, why'd you name your kid that? He'll never get a job. That, that comes from that colonization mindset of, you can't name them nothing unique. Like, I mean, my mom did the best she could, but if you look at it, my name is John. My brother's name is David. My other brother's name is Joey. I got a sister named Lisa. Like everything was so, and, get, and, and her name was Camelia. And so she changed that narrative or not, but it's about really displaying, we got enough information probably for a hundred episodes, all the things we keep finding out. Even uh, one of the, one of the beautiful things, and I, I don't want to miss, pronounced his name, but I don't know if you heard, New Zealand is actually changing its name back to its native name. So the country of New Zealand is actually changing back to its uh, original. So it's like this whole decolonization of the world that is in place. We come to the part of our interview. It's called Rapid Round of Fun. I'm going to ask you a series of questions and I want you to give me very quick answers. If there's something you okay. desire not to answer, feel free to say pass. Okay. Your ideal car? The electric Hummer. What is your comfort food? Ooh, that would have to be vegan lasagna. I, oh, man. <laughs> the last movie you saw? Avatar, the 
the second avatar. You relax doing what? Chilling with my kids. I they it's so funny. I actually like miss them when they're in school. Like because mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm a, I, I work from home for the most part. So yeah, that's when I relax. Chilling with the kids. Shout out to the kids. Say their name, yes. first name. Pax and Mars. So if you you hear me say a lot, I say peace on Mars. Uh, Because the name Pax actually means uh, the Roman goddess of peace. And the name Mars is the Roman god of war. And it's funny because I get a lot of people sometimes they're like, well, why did you name your kids after the Romans? I'm like, well, if you do research, you'll find out a lot of the original Romans were actually black. So that's why I did that. Thank you for sharing that. Your favorite singer or rapper? Anita Baker. Your favorite dance song? Dance song. Uh, I'm just going to say the artist. I'm going to say uh, Juvenile. <laughs> we'll just say that. We won't say the name of the song. <laughs> what food you eat every week, no matter what? That would have to be, I mean, shameless plug, but I, I do eat my protein shake every week, definitely. But I'll, I'll make it into a smoothie with some fresh fruit and things like that. But yeah, definitely, definitely my smoothies uh, with the protein shake in there. And you're adding the protein shake. Are you doing fruits it, with the chocolate or no? Not with the chocolate. See, the good thing is like there's so many varieties that you can do. One thing I'll do with the chocolate is I might add avocado and turn it into like a, a pudding. I'll refrigerate it for a little while and then turn it into a pudding. Uh, with chocolate, I'll probably do like banana and peanut butter. That tastes amazing. And the good thing is you can bake with them too. So like sometimes I might use them in the cookies or make blondies out of the vanilla, or I'll make brownies out of the chocolate. So it's very diverse, uh, has a good uh, profile where it can be baked as well. So it just depends on what the feeling is for that week. Are your kids vegan? They're vegan as well. Yep. Thank you for sharing that. Relax or hit the couch? Or it's really workout or hit the couch? Workout. It's crazy. I just, I, I'm addicted to working out. I, I really am. <laughs> John Lewis, thank you so much for joining us on Black Entrepreneur Experience Podcast. Before we let you go, share with our audience the best way for them to connect with you and do business with you and feel free to leave all your social media handles. The best way to reach me, uh, I would say is my email address is john at badassvegan.com. I'm on social media wise. I'm on <laughs> probably every platform from Instagram to Twitter to TikTok. I think I even got a Pinterest account somewhere, but it's all uh, under Badass Vegan. Uh, but I'll make sure that I do that because you never know. Somebody might just take your name and put whatever on that page and I want to be responsible for it. So yeah, you can definitely reach me at all the social media links as well. Thank you. And tell them about the product again, where they can get your shakes and where they can get your book. As far as the protein shakes, you can get them at Costco, Target, Publix, Ralph's, Sprouts as well, as well as Amazon Prime. We're on Amazon Prime as well. And when it comes to the book, you can find it at Barnes & Noble, Target, a lot of local bookstores as well, and Amazon Prime as well. Thank you, John Lewis. That's a wrap. Thank you for listening and subscribing to Black Entrepreneur Experience. We would love for you to leave a review and rating on iTunes and share with your friends. For show notes and more episodes, go to www.beepodcast.com. Join us next Wednesday. And remember, green is the new black. So keep your bank accounts and your business in the black. Hello, B Nation. Dr. Francis Richards here, and we have an exciting opportunity for you to make your voices heard and win big at Black Entrepreneur Experience Podcast, aka B Podcast. We're constantly striving to bring you the most engaging and insightful content, but we need your help to make it even better. We want to get to know you, our incredible listeners, on a deeper level. That's why we've launched a short survey to gather your valuable feedback by taking just a few moments to complete our survey. You'll have the chance to win an Amazon gift card. To view the contest rules and complete the survey, please visit our official website at drfrancisrichards.com slash survey. The survey is also in our show notes. Hurry though, the contest deadline is approaching fast. Don't miss out on this exciting opportunity to give us your feedback and win fantastic prizes. Head over to drfrancisrichards.com 
survey now. And thank you for your valuable input. The survey is also in the show notes. Thank you.